Hi, my name's Tracy Whaling from See Here Feel Art and today as well as a painting I'm going to talk about astral travel and I mean just talk about it because many of my previous videos mention it and talk about some of the experiences I've had a lot of questions about how I do it so coming up in this video we'll talk about the difference between dreams, lucid dreams and astral travel, how to induce lucid dreams and with astral in particular, how to get past the fear that many feel when they've been experiencing the vibrating buzzing sensation. I can tell you that it's like when they're right on the verge, how it feels, my own experiences of it, and general tips and tricks that could really help to make a difference in achieving astral travel, which may give you a whole new perspective to life itself. And that on its own can bring some incredible changes to your own. So let's start with dreams, just the differences between the three different things. We have regular dreams, we all have them. I've heard that some dream in black and white, but my own have always been in regular colour, as has anyone else I've asked. So that's a strange one to me. But like everything, through this video, there's going to be nothing scientific about it. There's going to be nothing but my own personal experiences and relaying those to you in the hope that they might help. So dreams, regular dreams, they're mostly like watching a bizarre film or video. Same for nightmares and can be made of random mishmash or if they're frequent dreams, repeated. There's usually something there that we've yet to fathom out but will likely become clear in the future and can often flash back in those moments when you need to recall them. And then there are lucid dreams. Now lucid dreams, I love these. And the difference is that you know you were dreaming and you can induce these yourself very easily. Your awareness of it can be like landing in the middle of a scene at a time you are more alert even in sleep. One of the best ways I know how to induce fun lucid dreams, even the scary ones are fun because you know you're dreaming in it, this can make it quite comical and again it can be like a regular dream or more detailed and more exploratory. Is that a word? Exploratory. Keeping it in. <laughs> more exploratory. <laughs> it can be places you recognize or feel familiar. And the easiest way I know of how to bring these dreams on is to play something loud in the background, be it your favorite show or music, loud and at a time where you know you will easily fall asleep because you're just tired. Um, but having it loud really makes a difference. The main thing is that you're aware, alert. You can question and explore more. I'd highly recommend that you keep a dream journal to write or sketch images you remember in. So yeah, it's very worth keeping a record. It's also good because, especially in the event of recurring dreams or dreams that seem familiar or have similarities with previous ones, you've got this record of them then you can go back and check and remind yourself what happened before. And it's like really interesting, it's really fascinating. And then there's astral travel, which is very different, again, very different from lucid dreaming. For me, the two can't be confused. They're very different. So yeah, that's, that's my own experiences of it, which I've been having since I was a child. My earliest recollections of astral was as a very young child, flying through the house, down the stairs, and seeing things from different angles, from that higher perspective. I can vividly remember at night flying back and forth from one end of the front garden to the other <laughs> and I never went past the garden wall or gate because we weren't allowed <laughs> we were kids I was a good kid <laughs> I never thought about the fact that I was outside flying <laughs> was I allowed to do that it was just the way it was it just happened and it was fine and it, it felt fine and I loved doing it but I can remember being really confused in the daytime when I'd like try and fly across the gut that I couldn't fly it, it made no sense to me but yeah that was quite funny it's possible part of the reason I found it so easy and natural was because I can remember just prior to being born six weeks early and I've mentioned that in more detail previously in another video but who knows I can only share my own experiences to date so how do I do it? Honestly, I've never been able to control it. For the most part, I'm aware of it. I'm already out. You know, I've been to sleep and I'm already out. There have been occasions 
where I've woken up as it was happening. But this was later on. This is much later on, like in my 20s. Yeah, there have been occasions where I've woken up as it was happening and I didn't understand what was happening and at first was quite frightened by what I was feeling and the only way I can describe it is, um, you know, people say a buzzing and a vibrating kind of feeling, which it is, but to me it was kind of like, if you ever had an electric shock? and you can feel it working its way through your body. It's a really strange thing. Now, disclaimer at this point, do not go stick your fingers in an electric socket. Common sense, people. It's not the same, it's similar. And this is what I'm trying to say. It's, it's the best way I can describe it. So yeah, because I guess because I'd had an electric shock a few years before, that when I first felt that I think that's what frightened me is because it was similar I didn't know what was going on and how could I possibly be having an electric shock you know I'm laying in bed there's nothing there and uh, so yeah that really threw me for a bit but because I was so aware of it suddenly and I was like I don't like this I wanted to stop it stopped it just faded out again as, as soon as it was fading in it was fading out again which was good that's a really good point that I need to make straight away and that you need to know. You can stop it. If you feel uncomfortable, you can stop it. That you are in control of completely. For me, it would start with the buzzing, the vibrating, and where some people, or sometimes with me, it can feel like you're starting to float out. At this particular time, when I was first being alert and awake enough to feel this buzzing, it actually felt like I was sinking through the bed. Now that, as you can imagine, was quite disconcerting because all logic would tell you there's no way you can do that. Floating's one thing, there's nothing in your way. You know, logically you can, you can go with that, but this feeling of sinking through the bed, a solid object, that at the time was confusing and disconcerting. You know, it's one of the things that made me sort of think, stop, I don't like this. What? I didn't understand what was happening. But yeah, then it happened again. About a week or so later, I just woke up feeling this, it was like the, the, the buzzing and the vibrating is what woke me up. And I knew it was, it was like, oh, why is this happening? What is it? And I just get more curious like when you know especially when things repeat themselves because obviously it's happened for a reason by that point but because i was so alert and suddenly questioning everything of course i was bang awake again and it stopped i at that point i think made a conscious decision that if it happened again i was absolutely going to do my best to recognize it know that i was safe whatever it was because here i am i'm still here and just try to relax every single muscle. Just try to relax, go with the flow, and see what happened from there. And at that point, I didn't feel fright like the fear. The fear was going from it. I was just more curious now. So yeah, it was about a week or so after that that happened again. And again, I was just I was just asleep and I just suddenly became aware of this buzzing, vibrating, getting stronger and I just, I didn't open my eyes, I just thought, right, just relax and I could feel it sinking, you know, I could feel the sinking feeling through the bed I said, just go with it, you're fine, it's okay Boom! I was out, stood next to the bed and it was such, it was only at that point I even connected what it was that was happening i hadn't even realized until that point that what i had been feeling was the beginnings of astral travel because in all the years i'd been astral traveling right from a child i'd always skip that bit i just went to sleep and then i boom i was out that part never actually woke me up or i never woke up during that part so yeah of course i was fascinated that opened up a whole new load of questions so i didn't go anywhere that time I can remember just standing there looking at myself <laughs> and then I sat on the floor because you're still you you still feel like you even though you're just this consciousness or astral figure what however you whatever you want to call it just energy you are still you you still came out of you you still feel like you you your energy is still full of 
you. So you still feel the same. You still feel the same as when sitting here now listening to this. You feel exactly the same. Except obviously you're not and you can do more stuff and you can float and lose all the stuff that you can't do in your body. But yeah, so this time I just sat there looking and, and realising all this. And of course I had the flashbacks of being born as well. And it was like that was the last time I can remember doing actually doing that sitting paying attention to what i was seeing and like when i was just before i was born i was literally looking at this baby and then suddenly i was the baby and i could feel everything instantly this baby was feeling i could see there were blue and purple strings on the walls that was the only way i could describe it as a child but yeah, I was born feet first. But the fact that I remember it, and of course, now I've been able to confirm to myself, with my own experiences, that your body is your vehicle. The real you is the you inside. The one that's astraline, the one that's doing whatever. That's the real you. And as I've mentioned in other videos about the reasons, you know, we're all here, or to have our own experiences, to learn, to be able to pass those lessons on. And it's it's all about creating, it's all about figuring out what can be better so that evolution happens, basically. Working out which bits don't work, which bits do work. What would be better next time? Would it be easier if we could do this? Or if we, had, if we were capable of doing this? I know it's gonna sound rambly to those if this is the first video of mine you're listening to, but I don't know, it's the only way I can explain it. So, back to the point of astral travel. If you're getting to the point of feeling the buzzing, that vibrating feeling, and you're aware of it, and it's scaring you, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. That's it. You've got to know that. Like, really know that. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. You know, your own fear is what holds you back. You have no reason for that fear. And I hope I've been able to show that now at least. Hopefully I'll make it easier for you. So the best way I can think of helping you to look at it and what you're feeling, you may also feel excited or nervous or are you unsure about doing it because you don't know what's gonna happen. Try and look at it differently. When we're born, certainly my recollection of being born is going in just before being born. That's number one for me. For your regular memory type, you're a baby. You want to move. First, you learn to use and control your fingers. You become a bit bigger, grow more, and you want to move around. So you learn to roll over. Shortly after that, you start learning to crawl. Shortly after that, you learn to stand up and take your own weight. After that, you learn to walk. Then you learn to run, fine point your balance, you learn to ride a bike. So if you go back and try and remember or try and think how you felt during those times, even if you can't remember being a, you know, a young child learning to walk and, and stuff like that, imagine what you felt like. You kept trying. You didn't stop because you can walk now. You kept trying. You kept doing it. There was no fear. You didn't care if you was going to fall over. If you fell over, you fell over. You didn't care. You got up again. There was no fear. There was no more thought than, I'm going to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to do this. There's, you don't even think about it. When you're a bit older, most people have a memory of learning to ride a bike. So if you look at it there, much the same way that You've learned to ride your bike with stabilizers and you know you can do it. You know you can balance. For the most part, you are riding on two wheels with your stabilizers either side. But when it comes to taking those stabilizers off, suddenly you get really scared and your confidence is gone and you're suddenly thinking, what if, what if, what if I fall? Or what if you do? <laughs> get back up again and you get on again and you get more determined. <laughs> and at some point, it kicks in with you as a child that you've been riding this bike for ages. You can do it. You want to do it without the stabilizers. So that fear's gone and it's, it's overtaken with just sheer determination. 
and the will and the wanting to do it. And then off you go on your bike. <laughs> Pedaling away. Everyone's cheering you. It's like, yay, because you've learned to do something else. So if you look at astral, if you look at, especially if you're actually at the point of feeling the buzzing, the vibration, the energy, you know, I mean, let's face it, that's what you're feeling is the energy. So if you're feeling that, just know in your heart, know it in your mind, know you're just about to take your stabilizers off. <laughs> and you've got this, it's nothing to be frightened of. It's just yet another thing you are capable of doing, like walking, crawling, jumping, jumping, we miss jumping. <laughs> All these things you can, you know, you learn to do that you're capable of, that your energy is allowing you to do. Oh, let your energy out to play. <laughs> Like stretch. That's all you're doing. So, um, yeah, so uh, back to painting. I don't know how else to, you know, show things sometimes. Sometimes words don't cover it. Sometimes pictures help more than words do. But yeah, you can see she's asleep and the energy's out. Coming out to play and coming out to do whatever that energy needs to do. And for me, you know, there's been a lot of learning from it, a lot of the experiences I've had. I can go into them more in future videos, I guess. I can talk about more of the previous experiences, like when I was younger, if you, you know, if you like. If there's an interest in that, let me know and I'll, I can make that video. But yeah, that's it. So I hope it's rambled all this, all sounds. Like I say, I, I can't talk about others' experiences. I can't talk about it from a scientific point of view because I'm not a scientist. I've never gone into it like that. All I have is my own experiences that I felt right to share them now because there are so many changes going on with so many people. A lot of people are becoming more aware of consciousness, of their own energy. It's just happening more. So of course there were more comments that, that show that they get into the vibrating stage and the buzzing, you know, the loud noise and they're stopping themselves and I just want you to know that's happening to you. You are right there, right there. <laughs> I can tell you how close. Can I tell you how close? You are that close that it's like you're standing on um, a wire and you choose to go to the right and back to bed when you literally it's that fine an edge you were there you just gotta let yourself fall onto the left side <laughs> that simple so um, yeah good luck and uh, thank you for listening to the ramble I'll be back shortly with another painting. Let me know. Let me know what you want me to do. Let me know what kind of videos you are finding helpful, whether it's the art, if you want more how-tos on that, whether it's a combination, kind of have been doing so far, ASMR on its own. Like, just, you're the ones who are here listening. Let, let me know what it is that you want me to do, and that will help me to know how best to help, which is all I really want to do at the end of the day. So, love you lots. Take care, happy travels, <laughs> I'll see you soon. If you like what you saw, if you like what you heard, if you like what you felt, please like, subscribe and leave a comment as all of that will really help with the algorithms and YouTube and letting people know I'm even there in the first place. It'll be really appreciated. Thank you. Sweet dreams.